When you think of the word Lord, what thoughts come into your mind? You may think of Lord as a term associated with submission, such as used by Sarah in 1 Peter 3, 6, when she obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You might think of it in a negative sense, such as when used by Jesus in Luke 22, verses 25 and 26, where he talks about the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. But let him who is the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. But you'll most likely associate the term Lord with Jesus Christ, as Peter did several times in his second epistle. He wrote, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3.18. The Greek term that is used by Peter is a word that is translated into English as Lord. Thayer defines this word as one having power or authority. He to whom a person or thing belongs, one who has the power of deciding, the possessor and disposer of a thing, or the owner. According to Strong, the root meaning of this term, uh, it, it connotes supremacy, primarily the idea of supremacy in authority. Well, Jesus himself reinforced this definition when he said, And why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Luke 6, 46. It's as if Jesus said, You call me Lord, implying that I have authority to direct your actions, yet you refuse to obey my commands. They only used Lord as a title and did not render the respect due to someone in authority. Jesus then likened them to a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the ruin that that house that, that came to that house, and it was truly great. Matthew chapter 12 begins with Jesus' disciples plucking heads of grain on the Sabbath day and being harshly corrected by the Pharisees for violating the law. Well, Jesus reminded the Pharisees of other sanctioned violations of the Sabbath law and finished his rebuke with, But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here, but if you had known what this means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath, Matthew 12, 6 through 8. Certainly Jesus was enlightening the Pharisees about weightier issues, but while doing so, he boldly proclaimed that he was Lord of the Sabbath. He was stating that he had the authority, the right to make the Sabbath laws, and he also had the right to modify or abolish those laws. In short, these were his laws, and he could do whatever he wished with them. He was establishing his lordship, his supreme authority to demand or forgive compliance. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, preaching to the Jews, said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified, Acts 2.36. Jesus' position and authority came from none other than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When they realized that they had murdered God's elect, they recoiled, men and brethren, what shall we do? But we know this was part of God's timeless plan to redeem mankind because of his death on the cross for our sins. God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father, Philippians 2, verses 9 through 11. When we take a closer look at Jesus as our Lord, we come to see him as creator and ourselves at his creation, to see him as God and ourselves as his children, and to see him as the king of kings and ourselves as subjects in his kingdom. We come to see that he and he alone has the authority and power to forgive our sins, and he alone has the power and authority to save our souls in heaven. Now others may claim to represent God, but our Lord actually is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And we've been given the exalted privilege to understand this mystery and the opportunity to willingly bow our knees in humble submission and confess that Jesus is Lord. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today and have a blessed day.